How do you even begin reviewing 2020 at this point? Well, for now, let's just stick to the positives because it's been a very solid year for gaming. Thankfully, for the first time in a long time, we've not had a gaming year dominated by tire fires of glitches or major disappointments. This time last year, we had Anthem ruining Bioware's career even further, Jump Force being a complete letdown, Far Cry New Dawn feeling like a reskinned cash grab, and Fallout 76's DLC only making it a bigger laughingstock. For 2020, and you can mostly point to things winding down at the turn of a generation as to why, the vast majority of top tier titles totally hit their marks. In regards to Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII Remake and The Last of Us 2, they absolutely smashed them. So while it's impossible to say where our collective headspace will be in another six months, let's reflect on a year that had a ton of stories to tell. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and this is 7 ups and 4 downs for gaming in 2020 so far. First up, downs. Number 4. Microsoft's Gameplay Showcase for the Xbox Series X Talk about the perfect storm of missing the mark. You had an audience starved of next-gen gameplay, an event announced to show what's being worked on, and then a last-minute swerve that ruined everything. Yes, although you could find mention of Microsoft clarifying that this was a third-party-only showcase beforehand, it was immediately clear that millions watching thought otherwise. Even outside of that perceived deception, though, what is still held up as a gameplay showcase had anything but. Its main event, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, might as well have not shown up. The vast majority of titles shown here, although promising enough, should not have been labelled Xbox Series X gameplay. They either looked totally capable on current gen hardware, or straight up didn't feel enticing through genre or what was shown. Here's to July's proper Xbox Series X event, and a healthier next 6 months for Microsoft. Number 3. Dan Hauser Leaves Rockstar Narrative and storytelling mastermind Dan Hauser is no longer with Rockstar, and although you might know his name, most people don't realise the long-term ramifications of this. See, Dan and Sam Hauser literally founded Rockstar. Dan is reportedly the left brain, the story yarn spinning type who leads various creative teams on tons of beloved franchises. Sam then is the right brain, the number crunching businessman who keeps everything in check. Together they oversaw what could be seen as the best hot streak in gaming history. That period between GTA 3 all the way up to GTA 5, taking into account everything that happened in between. Dan Hauser was lead writer on all your favourite Rockstar games. That's every last GTA, including the monumental GTA 5, both Red Dead Redemption's Bully and Max Payne 3. He's a hugely important force for creative good inside Rockstar, and his departure likely means the company will steer more into money-first decisions, the likes of which take 2 Strauss Zelnick has been skirting around for years. Dan's departure comes after other longtime figure Leslie Benzies left the company in 2014, responsible for making GTA 3 and working alongside both houses on all their biggest projects for that exact time period I mentioned, it's no exaggeration to say that this trio disbanding is disastrous for the rock star you know and love. Number 2. The Switch's hot streak finally cools down 2017. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, Splatoon 2 and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. 2018. Super Smash Bros Ultimate, Pokemon Let's Go, Super Mario Party and Octopath Traveler. 2019, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Pokemon Sword and Shield, and Luigi's Mansion 3. 2020, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Granted, many of the biggest Switch titles tend to come out in the second half of the year to maximise that late summer slash holiday sales window, but even with what's rumoured for the rest of 2020, it's slim pickings at best. Hopefully Nintendo have an ace up their sleeve and can show off what was once planned for E3 over a live stream instead. Right now, comparing those annual slates I just mentioned means that the Switch will have to skirt by on last gen ports and arbitrary fanbase wish fulfilment. Where Microsoft have ostensibly shut their stall until they can reopen with Series X taking centre stage, the Switch is on a different yearly trajectory thanks to only launching in 2017. It's likely here where Metroid Prime 4 was going to land, but we really need some confidence from first party studios ASAP. And number 1, Blizzard Butcher the Warcraft 3 Remaster Ok, there was one absolute tire fire I neglected to mention back in the intro, because for the vast majority of you listening, Warcraft 3 being on PC meant that it was easy not to care. However, Blizzard's handling of the Warcraft 3 Remaster, one of the most important, iconic and revered strategy titles of all all time no less, was nothing short of disastrous. Features promised weren't in the final build. Gameplay and character models shown were nothing like what people bought. It's pretty much the NAF Video Game Marketing 101 rulebook followed to a T. Of course, this being the gaming industry, Blizzard went one better. All of the UI tweaks and overhauls that were supposed to make Warcraft 3 Reforged better were retroactively applied to the classic original, thus making that version
version unplayable to fans as well. It's one thing to bungle your remake, but to mess with the classic so much that people can't even go back to it, that was a move that nobody saw coming. Finally, let's talk about some ups. EA seem to have learned their lesson. Maybe if we all pray in a circle, cross our fingers and focus really, really hard, EA learning their lesson about microtransactions and abusive consumer practices might stay true. Because right now, they're kinda back in everyone's good graces. We totally don't trust them, but at least Battlefront 2's 2017 debacle is in the rearview mirror. Speaking of Battlefront 2, that game received a level of post-launch support unlike anything in EA's wheelhouse, with its final major update being in May 2020. DICE were afforded the time to truly make it one of the best Star Wars games of all time. And we also got Respawn's mighty Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, a single player Star Wars title with zero predatory mechanics and a free post launch combat arena, EA have carried this momentum into 2020's newly announced Star Wars Squadrons, an aerial dogfighter that should continue where Jedi Starfighter left off, I honestly didn't expect such a novel genre to even be in their interests anymore. I am super curious to see where EA's handling of the Star Wars IP goes next generation. Number 6. Final Fantasy VII Remake finally releases after 14 years. If you were growing up in the 90s, chances are you played Final Fantasy VII. Chances also are that it was a transcendent experience, a game with characters so lovable they felt like friends, and a world so rich and worth saving you lived on that game for at least 40 hours. To even come close to replicating that game's importance was a Herculean task. And yet Square Enix actually dove in head first at the turn of the millennium, stating that remakes for Final Fantasy VII, VIII and IX were coming to PS2 with graphical and audio enhancements. In a pre-broadband age, this didn't set the world alight, but the company followed up with a remake reveal in 2005, only for it to be labelled as a PS3 tech demo. Understandably, fans were infuriated, and such began the discussions around remaking the game proper. Flash forward a decade and a half, and we finally have the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yes, it's only the first five hours of the original bloated out into 30, but it's real. It's something you can play. It includes the characters and world you love, and that music is just as exquisite as ever. For now, let's just take this as a win and hope that Square Enix know what they're doing. Number five, our next Batman game is Gotham Knights. I have lost count of just how many Batman Arkham rumours there have been since 2015, but earlier in June 2020 we finally got some official trademarks filed from Warner Brothers, further confirming what's coming next. Dive into the last decade of Warner Brothers Montreal and Rocksteady and you'll find one hell of a story regarding cancelled projects. You can find a video that Ewan put together explaining that timeline on the channel. It seems that both companies were trying to lockstep with the DCEU movie side of things, and it resulted in a constantly shifting release slate. Thankfully though, with these trademarks comes further confirmation that not only are we getting another Batman game, this time ditching the Arkham branding to become Gotham Knights, but Rocksteady have shifted to work on a Suicide Squad game instead. Number 4. The Doom and Animal Crossing Coalition One of those runaway memes that becomes a brilliant talking point, Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing sharing the exact same release date saw two polar opposite fan bases unite as one. Doom Guy was suddenly basking on a beach alongside Isabel, and she was joining the Marine to thin the hordes of hell itself. All round, this was a glorious couple of months, and both titles turning out to be absolutely stellar only placed a cherry on top. Number 3. The World Coming Together on Animal Crossing Elijah Wood dropping by someone's island to pick fruit, Danny Trejo inviting people to hang out, Star Wars writer Gary Witter starting a talk show, Queer Eyes Bobby Brown giving interior decorating tips, wrestlers, musicians, Guy Fieri and anyone else you could think of were all living it up in the idyllic life sim that is Animal Crossing New Horizons. Such a massive influx of players made Animal Crossing the highest selling Switch game ever, and to this day you'll find millions of players trading turnips, requesting songs from KK Slider, or meticulously arranging some chairs and flowers before their friends come round. With Nintendo adding copious amounts of things to do including museum expansions and swimming, Animal Crossing New Horizons has been the brightest light among so much darkness and the perfect game to get lost in right now. Number 2 every company's E3 plans becoming live streams. Let's be honest, E3 hasn't been E3 for quite some time. Too many CG trailers being shown over gameplay footage, too many broken stage demos whenever the latter happens, far too much bloat, mass market pandering and not enough direct information for the people that actually watch the show in the first place. Once the ESA's plans leaked and showed the top brass were only concerned with influencers, cashing in social chits, creating cutainment and all sorts of other god awful terminology around hashtag gamers, the 
coffin nails were pretty much inserting themselves. Strangely though, the ongoing global situation forcing everyone to reevaluate their production budgets led to one hell of a silver lining. All of the major conferences we were going to watch in a weekend can now be various live streams spread across multiple weeks. No marketing guff, no pomp or circumstance. IGN launched the Summer of Gaming, to which they've had announcements every single day throughout June. Jeff Keighley will then be taking over with Summer Game Fest across July and August. And in between, we've had everyone from EA to CD Projekt Red getting involved, with many more alongside. Is this the future of conferences and mass exposure to trailers and reveals? Let me know what you think down in the comments. And number one, that PS5 reveal. If you were watching live, it was brilliant. Even checking out the highlight reel now or diving into that sleek synthwave backed reveal animation is a great feeling today. After so many delays, so many rumors and back and forths with Microsoft as to which features and price points were being led with, we got an old school game showcase topped off by the console arriving in full. Sure, the PS5's design is divisive. Some people think it looks like a modem from 2007. The games though had everybody punching the sky. Horizon Forbidden West, Spider-Man Miles Morales, Resident Evil 8 Village, Ratchet and Clank A Rift Apart, Hitman 3 and a Demon's Souls remake. All of those are only a third of what Sony showed off. It really was an immaculately paced sizzle reel, with just the right amount of genre diversity and timing across the board. And those were my picks for the ups and downs of gaming in 2020 so far. Let me know your picks down in the comments below, and if you have time, please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com, and I'll catch you soon.